Hello learners, I am Garima Avasthi and today we are going to talk about the topic the social aspect of language. So when we talk about the social aspect of language, we are talking that how is it that a language works in a society. You have already learnt about the psychological aspects of a language. How is it that our language is acquired in the brain? What are the psychological aspects of language? Today, we are going to talk about the social aspects of a language. Now, when we talk about the social aspects of a language, we talk about the relationship between a language and a society. That is that how does a person learn a correct language in the society and its use. So now, if you see in and around, when we are learning language, we acquire language through universal grammar. That is something that we have already talked about. So when we talk about learning of correct language in the society, then we say that how is it that we will use a particular language at a particular place. And this is what we get from our society. Nobody teaches us. It is our inner sense which through which we know with whom we are going to talk about. And you also know that children imitate a lot. So they see their adults talking in different scenarios in a different manner. In fact, one point of comparison that they can easily make is how the adults or their parents, for example, are talking to them vis-a-vis -vis how they are talking to the other people outside the family or inside the family amongst themselves. How are these adults talking? So that is what we talk about when we talk about the social aspect of language, that this language plays different parts, plays different roles in different people's lives and how we use it in one relation differs from the other relation. Now, children learn very quickly to behave themselves linguistically, that is according to people, according to places or occasions. You'll see even a small child is very open in their home environment. They are going to be very active, they are going to be very talkative. But if somebody else comes to their place, then they're going to be a little shy because you are new people with the child. And so they know that talking to you is going to be different than talking to their mothers. They can show, for example, tantrums in front of their mothers. They can't do that in front of you or with you. Maybe they do it in front of you with their mom, but that is not how they're going to talk with you. So children know how to behave themselves linguistically in front of people. Similarly, children also know how do we behave in places that is inside or outside. And you can see this transaction more starkly if the child has started to go to the school. You'll see that their behavior is changed completely. The way they behave in the school is very different from the way they behave at home. The way they talk in school is different from the way they talk at home. So accordingly, the child is switching roles. According to the occasions, the child is switching roles. So if there's a sad occasion, the child is also very sad. They are down. They're very confused. They're very uncomfortable at that time. And they will generally bow down their head and not really talk to other people and they will be very uncomfortable. They might sometimes also be cranky and questionable. And then there are times when there's happiness and there the child is going to jump around, express themselves and the child is going to be free. And accordingly, if there's somebody new at their house, in some time they will open up. But if they are meeting this person in a very unfamiliar situation, chances are that they might not open up in the first or second instances. Now, this is also varied from places to places and children to children, according to the exposure they have had to different people, according to their observations. So if they have had chances where they are looking 
at different people, talking in a different way, they are able to pick up those signs immediately. And if they are unable to have that sort of comparison, then it becomes a little difficult for them or a little later that they are going to learn how to linguistically behave. Now, when we talk about language, we talk about children learning various structures and various styles of language usage. So how they talk to their peers, for example, if a child goes out, then they will say the word yar a lot in our Indian context. They start, they pick it up very quick, but they won't use this inside the classroom. They in fact might use it at home because it's an expression of disdain for them sometimes or disbelief or re yar. So this is an expression which I have personally observed in children. So this happens that these children pick up these things and that is how they use it. Now another example is how a particular language is chosen in different ways. So you all know that Hindi as a language is very varied. So if you worked with students from maybe Uttar Pradesh or Bihar, the word hum is used even for themselves and even for others. So if they use hum khana kha rahe hain, it means that only the child is eating and not we. Hum is generally translated as we, that there are a lot of people and together they are eating food. But in their area, hum is used even for a singular person, a personal person. So there, if the child is saying hum khana kha rahe hain, it might mean that only he or she is eating food. And they realize this once they come to the school and if they're are other children that they interact with and they say Main khana kha raha hu. and then they get a sense of this okay, all right so if they are eating alone they are saying me they are using the word me and this thing will take place that slowly and steadily the child is going to replace the word hum with me but this will happen only in school because they have noticed that at home they will use hum even when they are addressing to themselves so this is a very particular example of how children pick up language within the society. <coughs> now, we already talked about a universal grammar when we were talking about the psychological aspects of language. We said that the child is born with an innate sense of grammar, which helps the child to learn rather than acquire any language or multiple languages at the same time and grammar is not really taught to the child firsthand they acquire language and they acquire correct speech when it comes to their home language or their mother tongue and incorrect speech is generally what is related to or is tied to with second languages like English or maybe some other language which the child is getting exposed to only in school. So when we talk about universal grammar we say that the child learns language intrinsically as well as from his or her environment. They hear the language around them and they learn it. They have that innate sense of universal grammar but without any other output from the outside world it's very difficult for them to acquire language. So if nobody is speaking around them at all, how is it that they are going to acquire a language even if they are born with universal grammar? So hence, when we talk about language acquisition, when we talk about how do we learn language, it is important to know that both the psychological and the social aspects are very much tied together and both of them combined help a child to learn or acquire a particular language. So how does this thing play? We can say that a context, that is, where is it that the child is using language? Is it at home? Is it at school? Is it with the friends? 
Who are the people whom the child is talking to? Is it a person? Is it person as in it is it a teacher? Is it my mom, my dad, my friend? Accordingly, I'll choose my language. What is the place? If it's my home, then sometimes you'll see children behave weirdly in playgroups. If they are bringing a friend of theirs at their place, right? They will be confident because it's their area, it's their place, it's their home. But on the other hand, when they go to the same person's place, which is the same child they brought, they'll be a little calmed down they, because it's an unfamiliar environment for them. So the place also matters. How the child is using language is very much dependent on the four factors, which is context. That what is the context? Is it a play context? It is a school context or is it a home context? Or the person? Whom are we talking to? Friends, teachers, parents. Place. Is it my home? Is it my school? Where is it? And what is the theme? What am I talking about? If the subject is known to the child, especially children love to talk about what they do because it's something that they know. But if you ask them questions out of the blue, they might get very disinterested. Sometimes they even feel that they don't want to talk to you because they find that they are in a very difficult situation. So all of this matters and these four things lead to their choice of words. What are the kinds of words they are going to you? For example, children will use tu a lot with their friends. Tu aise kar, tu aise kar, teri, teri, teri. These are the words which are used in a play situation. But at home, they won't say tu to anybody maybe to their younger sibling, but generally this doesn't happen. Generally, children are not going to talk like this at their home or inside the classroom in the presence of a teacher. If the teacher is outside and they are talking amongst themselves, then again these languages come into play. Then is selection of sentences. What are the kind of sentences we are choosing? is also dependent on all of this. So these four affect how the child is going to speak, the choice of words, and the selection of sentences. What kind of sentences are we speaking with the other person? So what is it that we are speaking? So, ma'am, may I please go to the toilet? Is something that the child will say at school. It's a very respectable thing. The teacher is holds a very respectable place and hence there's a sense of permission, a sense of request within the child. But then there is another scenario where the child is selecting sentences at home, which is, mom, can I go there? So there, there is an absence of the word please, a seeking of permission, may I, all of that is gone. So hence we can say that a child's selection of sentences and his or her choice of words are very much dependent on the context, person, place and theme that they are talking about. Next, we talk about social differences and stratifications. Social differences and stratifications are prominently observed in the way we use languages. So it also depends on whom we are talking to and this is how actually, generally, the unset concepts of class, caste, gender get from one generation to the other. So they, children imitate adults and imitation is what leads them to learn these stratifications. And that is why we stress on language when we talk about all of these things. So how a person talks to adults is one thing. But how they are talking to somebody who is other than from their class is something different. So if a child is noticing that my mother is talking to other people in a manner which is very cordial, then that is how adults speak. But then they see that if there's a household help and the mother can sometimes shout and she can order. So it shows that maybe this is also the way that mom sometimes scolds me 
and I am younger. But this lady isn't younger. This lady is equal to her age and yet there's a social difference. There's a difference in how she's speaking and hence he says that you can talk in a manner like this to people who are beneath you and hence this woman is not equal to us. This is also how men talk down to women. So in an atmosphere where the male is very dominant on the female, the child is able to notice that. The child is able to notice the difference which happens within language, through language. That is, if I as a person of the family am talking to other people in a very normal way or, you know, will you have this, will you have that, and I'm ordering the female, it shows that there is a difference on the basis of gender. So these dimensions come into place and these stratifications and differences are observed in the way we use language and it is how these are carried from one generation to another. One very famous ad which we would have seen, it's a recent ad where there are two little children and they are playing and one is a girl and another is a boy and they play and the girl wins and the boy loses and the father says it's okay if you have lost but you've lost from a girl so it is automatically that now the child will be thinking okay so it's okay to lose but it's not okay to lose if there's a girl who's my competitor so this is how we are supposedly also creating these social differences. It is how language is taking forward the social differences and stratifications. Now, <clears throat> it is often dependent on the way sentences are constructed and words are found and even the way how they are pronounced. So, how is it that we are using words? How are we pronouncing them? How are we saying them? Sometimes it is what we say the tone that matters. The way sentences are made is matter. So if I say khana khalo or eat, if I'm saying eat, it means there's something which is maybe I'm angry or I'm ordering you eat. And if I'm saying eat, then I'm saying, okay, come, let's eat. So it's just a word which I have said, but how am I saying it that matters? And Similarly, how are my sentences constructed? So, please, can you do this? Is I'm requesting you to do something or can you do this? Can you do this is you have to do it. You know, it's not really there or even do this. Please do this or do this. So there are differences where on one hand, I'm requesting the person and asking, okay, can you please do it? On the other hand, I'm just telling them, I'm ordering that you have to do it. So it depends on the way sentences are constructed, on the way words are formed and how they are pronounced, that it depends how are we using language. We use language, so I'm speaking English, I spoke English, but yet how I do it, the way in I do, that is what we talk about in social aspects of a language. Now, when we talk about all of these things, you can easily note that linguistic identity is directly related to social identity. So sometimes the language I'm speaking has various ways or various languages I'm speaking in social and professional circles. So for example, if you ask me that where are you from? Without asking me where are you from, if you want to know where I am from and you say, okay, so what are the languages you speak? And I say, I speak Bengali. So immediately you know that I'm from Kolkata or maybe I have roots. I have one parent or the other or both my parents are Bengali. So it tells you where I belong to. My social event identity is revealed to you. And that is why when we say, English. English is a big thing. So if somebody knows English, you say that they are already 
from a privileged background or they have had some sense of a privilege. And if they have some difficulty in English, you immediately know that their social identity, they are not from that privileged background, right? So these are some things. This is how we relate a linguistic identity to a social identity. Now, if I'm a person and I am speaking a particular language or I'm speaking a lot of languages in different circles. So if I am a Punjabi, I will use Punjabi at my home and maybe with my children who don't know Punjabi because they haven't been born and brought up in that way, they use Hindi. So inside my house itself, with my spouse or with my parents, I'm talking in Punjabi. Whereas with my children, I am talking in Hindi because we also speak Hindi at home. So that is what they have acquired also. And that is what they speak in school, they speak with their friends. And then I go to my office, I go to my professional circles, and there I'm supposed to speak in English because that's the language that they use. So this is how I am speaking various languages in different circles. And sometimes I'm also speaking the same language in various ways, which as I told you earlier was in case of a person who is speaking Hindi, but is maybe speaking Khadi Boli at the workplace and Bridge or Avdhi at home. So Hindi is a language, but they are using it in different circles. They are using a particular kind of Hindi at one place and another kind at a different place. This is how we say that our linguistic identity is related to the social identity. Now, ours is a multilingual nation. When I say multilingual, I mean we are not restricted to one or two languages. Two would be bilingual, three would be trilingual. We are multilingual. There are enormous, enormous number of languages. There are a lot of official languages, there are state languages, and there are different dialects, there are different variety of that particular language itself. So in a nation like ours, which is multilingual, people decide which language they are going to use. And how is it that they are going to use that particular language, which is based on the place where they are communicating. So if I am from, as I told you earlier, from a particular background, and I talk in different languages at different places, I decide which language to use where. So. Standard languages like Hindi and English will probably be used in my professional circles. Sometimes it may be possible that I use both these languages at home also. But it happens that there's a different variety. The way I speak is different. And then there are also instances where I'm speaking different languages at different places. So there are some people or some families, especially children, of families who, whose parents are in the forces, in the armed forces, and they keep on you know, commuting from one place to the another. So the child is born into a home which, if we say, is a Tamilian house, but they are living in Bengal, they're living in Kolkata, right? So they automatically, they know Bengali, and they also know their language, which is Tamil. So at house it's Tamil and outside with peers and at school also sometime it's Bengali. So there happens to be a case where the child will know Bengali but the parents won't. Both are staying because the transfer happens of the entire family. And the child learns two languages there and the third is a standard language and then a fourth language which is English is introduced. So different places at different stages we are introduced to these languages. And we use these different languages differently in different scenarios. So this was about the 
social aspect of language, how is it that language is related to our society and how is it that social differences and stratifications are prominently observed by the way we use language. This is all that we discussed in this lecture. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture.